Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Gloomhaven. I figured we'd take uh, Gator, Zim and Kata out uh, and maybe do the Treacherous Divide because there's cultists there, which is good for Gator. There's Spitting Drakes there, which is good for Zim uh, and Kata just needs to, to get through places. I'm not sure if this this particular team is strong enough to manage that, but you know, there's there's always a chance. Um, in terms of purchasing stuff, um, we're very poor. Um, but I was actually uh, having a very quick look at Zim's cards, and one thing that we could do, uh, not right now, um, but soon, is stick a wound on syringe. And stick either like a strength or a bless on it as well. And then this would become, oh my god, incredible. I haven't actually had a look to see uh, what we could upgrade with with Kata's stuff either. I mean, there's there's a lot of potential things. Soulfire would probably be a good one to start upgrading the range on. And the same with, uh, with Armour of the Night. If we were to put Strength and Bless on this, that just becomes the, the go-to, oh my god, we're going to not... Well, yeah, we'd want, we'd want it on this and we'd want it on Smoke Step. Um, but an anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we're going to have a city encounter, uh, as always, before we do anything. So after a night of revelry at the Sleeping Lion, you head out into the streets and notice a suspicious man in black robes skulking towards an alleyway. You've been hearing reports about a cult inside the city calling themselves the Ravens and performing all sorts of terrible acts. Perhaps this is one of them. Um, let's follow him. Using the night like a cloak, you follow the man unseen and unheard. Eventually he stops at a small dwelling nestled under a the west wall ooh okay so the sacrifice pit whatever this cult is up to you should probably stop it so there's bandit archers bandit guards black imps cultists cultist and victim so this is like a little Boss thing. Oh, I'm curious. I mean, to immobilize, push, pull, and stun. But we could wound. We can poison. We can muddle. There's there's a lot of potential things on there. Okay. All right. Let's um. Let's see. So twenty bandits or cultists. This is a good map for that. Not so much for Zim. So we could swap Zim out for someone else. It's not a crypt scenario. Getting more money for Fairfox is a good idea. Okay, let's let's try this. So we'll we'll swap Zim over for Fairfox. Completely unexpected. This is not what I thought we were going to be doing this time at all. But I'm okay with that. I did say we'd uh, go back and do the Drake scales at some point, and we will. Known about Just their not, motives, not yet. Except that their machinations cannot be good for the city. They've been blamed for multiple kidnappings within Gloomhaven, and some even believe they're responsible for the local demon attacks. You step inside the unassuming structure and see a set of stairs in the corner leading down. Doing your best to remain silent. You make your way into an expansive basement made of blood-spattered stone and littered with bones. You... you are not supposed to be here. A group of guards appear at the far end of a long hallway. You will not stop the sacrifice. The ravens will feast on your corpse. Mmm, tasty. Okay, uh, Gator, kill five or more monsters. We want you to get maximum kills. Um, the other option 
loot no gold piles. That just doesn't seem like something we're going to do. Um, Fairfox, take only long rests or your health at the end is equal to your maximum health. Yeah, we can do the, the fast healer. And uh, down here on Cater, kill a monster by causing at least four more damage than is normal, allow no one to become exhausted. Let's go for Protector. I mean, this is none of your allies. I wonder if the bear counts in that. I, either way, I think uh, I think this is probably our best bet. Unfortunately, we are still level two. Uh, so this is like directly equivalent to level two. In fact, that's, I don't think it could get much better. So on average, they are four divided by two. Yeah. And then it's supposed to be rounded up. So this is actually as powerful as they could be. Here we go. Ooh, there's, there's quite a lot of things in here, isn't there? Okay, so there is going to be a bear in front of us. The bear is going to move one space and attack. So, if we were to start the Tinkerer here, we could start with Reviving Shock and Enhancement Field in order to like maximize the amount of damage we're going to output. So what do we have? We've got Bandit Guard Elite, and we've got two Bandit Guards directly in front, and then there's Archers down the end, and then that pushes through into here. The Colson Victim act at 99, initially moving towards the altar and opening doors for Needsby. If they reach the altar, the scenario is lost. So we don't see the Cultist and, and Victim yet. Now, at the start, are you going to put out the bear on any nearby space, or is it always... Well, I mean, the bear can move through, so it's, it's not really a problem. Uh, we want to move slightly slower than this for the enhancement field, so forceful swipe is great. And... Maybe Venomous Ally, so we can get some poison out on, on the Elite guy. Okay, and over here, we're going to want to plan for murder. So Spirit of the Night will let us just outright kill someone. But we need to move quite far in in order to do that. So maybe we should just go for invisibility. We could also come in and start cursing. Okay, so we're gonna do cursing. So that's dark cloud. We want something that's gonna move us and this makes it only move one. Okay. New plan. Venomous ally is range 4. So you're actually going to go here. Katie, you're going here. So we're going to just need smoke step to move 1. And dark cloud to... To do the attack. We should be able to move in there, unless the unless the bear really, really pushes for it. But if the bear pushes for it, we'll go the other way. Yeah, we can only pick one of these two places. Okay, uh, well, we'll have the bear on the left-hand side. They are moving quite quickly, and they end up going before us, which is a real shame. 
There's no point in us moving faster than the archers. They are attacking at range 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. So they can hit us. Alright, we are looking for maximum damage. You know what, let's, um, let's go for the ones in front. Cool, he's going to die. And this one has just died outright. Good job, Tinkerer. Ah, it did actually reorder. Okay, that's that's actually good for us. We'll get the poison off. Unfortunately, they're not close enough for forceful swipe. Um, but we can get a skeleton out for the future. And, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Ow! Very painful. Well, it didn't go according to plan, so we're not going to use smoke step to gain any darkness, but we are going to get this attack off and a curse on the elite. Okay, I would like to heal the bear and we can use disintegration beam to move in and disarm him. That's just smart. Over here, we'll do Armour of the Night to actually get dark for next turn. And... One, two, three. We could come through with Dancing Shadows to move in and attack one of these. I like that. Over here, the bear is going to move in a little bit. I'd like the bear to keep moving. Let's get a patch of fur off to carry on that healing. And we'll... Uh, hmm. One, two, three, four. It's out of range. We could use Relentless Ally to move ourselves in. We need to start picking up the gold on these. So let's... No, we can't because we're using patch fur. If we're using patch fur, then it's only about potential attacks. So we may as well use more, make sure it actually gets gone. Uh, yeah, I'm fine going at that speed. Although, actually, move four, attack one, range four. If we go faster... We can potentially mess them up a little bit. So, in... Bit of a stab. Shield and generate dark, so next turn we can just outright kill one of these. Good job, bear. Heal yourself up, bear. And we'll get you to finish killing this elite guy. A 
very strong attack. Slight overkill. Um, one, two, three. Yeah, let's um, let's actually get them all back. Right, archers. With advantage. That's not too bad. Okay, well, unfortunately, this is uh, not as useful. Do we want the Tinker to go for it, or...? Let's disarm him for next... In fact, is disarming him for next turn worth it? Because he's going to just die. No, it's not worth it. Let's grab this. And we'll get the healing off like we planned. It's a nice combination, this party, I find. Okay, so over here, we're going to do um, Spirit of the Night to get the kill. We'll do Cloak of Shade. Um, in order to just just move relic. In fact, we'll do empowering void and spirit of the night because we we only need to move a tiny distance and then just like murder. Over here, one, two, three, four. We need to move four, so that's going to be relentless ally. And if we're going to be moving late, let's do it that way round. Uh, one, two, three, four. It'd be good to move in four, so Ink Bomb will do. And we'll go Toxic Bolt so that we've got an attack on this guy, I think. Oh, maybe we could stun shot him, actually. Because it doesn't matter if we get disadvantage, he'll still be stunned. Yeah, moving semi slow. One, two, three. Yeah, we can actually hit him with a stun shot right now. And in we come. Really, I want him to get the kill next turn, but for this turn, I'm fine with this. And yeah, just literally come to here. And we'll kill you. Murder! He's stunned. Here comes the bear. Ah, oh, cool. Well, that means the Tinkerer can get him next turn. Um, I mean, I would like it to carry on moving towards the... Uh, actual enemy but let's uh, step in over here and then the big question is do we let this happen and I think we kind of have to so the reason I'm getting all the money with the uh, beast tyrant is because we need to be able to buy that axe that's, that's the only real reason for it Okay, if we get a Toxic Bolt to damage you and then we can do Volatile Concoction to give someone a card back. I'd like to generate some darkness, so Cloak of Shade will do that for us. And then Silent Force will just get us to move one space. We'll move really slowly to do this, but that's fine. Uh, and over here, I want to go a little bit slower. Uh, we need to move two. So... Borrowed Essence, and a 
let's go energizing strike. In fact, no, I'd like to use energizing strike as an actual heal. We'll go to disappearing wounds. Okay, just a regular attack. That's all we need. Uh, we'll give you back a card. And... It'd be nice to give you back Cloak of Shade, but... We'll give you back Spirit of the Night. Although Dancing Shadows would allow us to... Mm. And we need something with a decent move on the bottom. Which we... Which we only have here, but we're not going to burn it. That's fine. So the bear stays where it is. Skeleton. It's going to move a bit closer. We're actually going to step in with the beast tyrant. We could open the door. I'm not sure if it's a smart move because it's really going to like trigger everything. So let's let's not let's instead get closer to I mean we're not much closer to the door but it is slightly closer. And then we can look at our potential rests. You don't need to rest. But we could give the Night Shroud back all of their cards. So Net Shooter Reinvigorating Elixir. Spirit of the Night Soul Fire. And I think... We'll use Disorienting Roar and Energizing Strike. We'll heal everyone up just a little bit and then we'll push in next turn. Come in, skeleton, get a little closer. Okay, we could actually do it on the Beast Tyrant and, like, really get all those cards back. But it's going to be much more useful on the Night Shroud. Okay, and the Night Shroud... It looks like we didn't actually generate dark. Well, do we move in this turn then and get the... Um... No, because everyone needs to rest. Okay. You're going to do a long rest. You don't need to do a long rest. So, hypothetically, we're going to use... We would need Spirit of the Night back. That's, that's fine. We can trust that we'll get it back. So we would use Spirit of the Night to kill, which means we would need something with a decent move 
on the base, which is Cloak of Shade. So we're not going to use Cloak of Shade this round. Let's use... Let's use Smoke Step. And... Silent Force this round, just to generate the dark. And over here, it's going to be a long rest. Wait, if you skip the movement, does it not generate the dark? I think that's what I've been uh, doing wrong. All right, uh, let's lose Relentless Ally. It's fine, we'll, uh, we'll still make it work. We just need to work it differently. And over here, we'll lose Net Shooter, I think. Okay, we need to move in quite powerfully. So, Ink Bomb will get us in, and then let's go with a Toxic Bolt. Dancing Shadows and Cloak of Shade. Actually, Cloak of Shade is an attack. Yeah, we can use Dancing Shadows to, to move in a tiny bit. We're, we're only going to get to, like, here, but that, that's fine for now. Until we see what's actually going on in there. And on this side, uh, we want to move in as far as we can. So punch through, it's going to give the bear a decent move, and let's say maul. Okay, step. You burst through the door at the end of the hallway and see a naked man in chains kneeling in the center of the room. Around him are many figures in dark robes. Yeah, we've definitely got to stop this. Get him up. Get him to the altar. One of the figures yells as he moves towards the prisoner. The rest of you deal with these intruders. Once our dark master feeds on the innocent blood, our unwelcome guests will be destroyed by his power. Okay. Uh, finish moving. Generate the dark. Here comes the bear. And the skeleton, right. So the bear... Actually, sorry, our beast tyrant is going to come in to help confuse things. Which is actually going to be really good for us. But we're not close enough with the mall, which is a real shame. So, let's just do a regular attack. Uh, this guy is not immune to poison. And it's range 3. 1, 2, 3. So yeah, let's get right to the back. And we'll get a toxic bolt on him right now. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna be nasty. Yeah, take the damage. Too bad.
Okay, we're going to be going for Reviving Shock and Enhancement Field. Over here, you are stuck next to this, but you can kill it if we use... Wait, Dark hasn't been generated again. Ah, oh, it's because we, we actually moved to two, didn't we? That's because I'm an idiot. Okay. Well, we'll do Armor of the Night and Dark Cloud. Um, we get the curse on the skeleton. I think that's the smart move. Uh, and over here... We can use Disorienting Raw to pull the big guy back, which would be brilliant and amusing. But we can save that for, like, next turn. So let's instead say Patch Fur and Energizing Strike. They're moving quick, but thankfully they're just healing up for stuff that's not really that relevant. That is an unfortunate roll. Skeleton is going to struggle. Okay, it's a good hit. The strengthen would be more useful if we had a second attack on the base, but we'll get the healing in. Which way do we want to do this? Attack three with the curse or attack four without it? This might kill him, which would be great. The other one would have killed him as well. Well, we'll... Ah, oh, which means this is not going to happen. So we still don't end up with the dark. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Maximum frustration, right? Uh, I'm going to target both of these guys. So he can start bleeding out and this one can uh, start bleeding out as well. My poor skeleton! More skeletons and taking even more damage. Okay, so maybe there would have been an advantage for not letting these guys in. I mean, they are going to block this doorway. 
Okay, over here, I kind of feel like you need to do some restorative mist on yourself. Um, but we could use disintegration beam like in that direction to do disintegration beam has got a lot of potential on this uh, it could kill three things specifically let's um Let's go for the flamethrower to do a bit of shielding in this area. Uh, and what we'll try and do is we'll try and get some other kills and pass the time-ish. Uh, so this is going to be a short rest over here. Like shade, that's a shame. We'll go armor of the night to get the shield and the darkness. And Dark Cloud to get the attack off. And over here... We don't need to heal you up yet. Let's go... Let's go Borrowed Essence and Venomous Ally. We can do some ranged attacking. Okay, so... Shielding allies. What are the imps going to do? They're going to move and attack up range and poison. That's not great, but we'll get the healing off first. Way too well. Yeah, my bear is going to need a lot of healing. Okay, let's get the shield on. the time zero another time zero we're getting lucky with those this is going to poison up which is annoying but we can we can take the peppering of damage Okay, come on, bear. That's a good hit. I am wondering whether I should focus more on what's going on in this room. So who is still to go? Right. He's going to summon another guy and then die. But we don't want another living bones so taking him out is a very smart move then getting some more damage over on you it's a shame you didn't really need healing, but getting the poison gone is nice. Look how many skeletons he's summoned. This 
This is honestly terrifying how many they've ended up with in there. All right. Uh, they can move two, and then next turn we can pull them back. So we've still got time to do things. Uh, let's go hook gun and volatile concoction. Let's go stun shot and volatile concoction. Over here, it is actually dark, so we could move to and kill something with the spirit of the night. So let's say empowering void will get us to kill something and that'll help out a bit. Forceful swipe and yeah, disorienting rule, forceful swipe. Uh, I think getting the muddle over here could actually be really useful for us. And also acting quickly will help. I know the imps are healing, that's fine. Can ignore the imps. Although it's gonna take a while while they do all of their stuff. Muddle in and mobilize. What are these uh, skeletons actually going to do? They're going to move for attack one, target two. So we want to be out of range of them, really. So let's go to here and we'll push this skeleton down this way. damage to be taking. It's a lot of skeletons. through this. Uh, yeah, definitely going to use the ring on that. <sighs> Let's burn disappearing wounds. And we'll burn... Punch through and venomous ally. Yeah, I did these the, the wrong way around, really. It wouldn't have made much difference, but 
it's definitely making some difference. Keep the damage on on the big tamale. And we'll give you back a card. We want to make sure that you keep Disorienting Roar. So we'll give you that back. That way when we rest we won't uh, lose it. Okay, just outright kill him. Okay, now is the time for the disintegration beam. Really, I'd want. In fact, let's um, let's do a short rest. Maybe stun shot to move one, two, three, and then we'll disintegration beam that way and disintegrate all three of these. Dancing shadows will keep us safe. And silent force is a decent attack. And over here, we'll do a short rest. And we're going to do more and disorienting roar. I was tempted to do Disorienting Roar and Patch Fur, but I think we, we kind of have to do what we can. I tell you what, this is a this is a harder mission than I thought. There is a lot of a lot of mobs. Oh bear. It's lovely you're doing that, but Okay, we're going to swap you and you. We may as well get the bear to try and attack this one. The disintegration beam is still going to be targeted for, for three, but it should kill this guy. So it makes it worthwhile trying that. So move. Oh, no. Undo. Undo. Move in. And disintegration beam this way. <laughs> Free experience. Ow. <laughs> Lots of ow. Yeah, I don't think we're going to manage this. Allowing them to open that back room was a mistake. Like a big mistake. Uh, let's lose enhancement field. And we'll lose volatile concoction. And we'll lose flamethrower. <laughs> and we'll lose hook gun. Ooh. 
Lose energizing strike. Ooh. Yeah, we are we are running running ourselves Ooh. down at this point. We did get very unlucky with the number of skeletons that the cultists summoned. Oh, that was an absolutely insane number. It's burned so fire. So at this point, I'm now thinking it's worth us trying to get what gold we can. Uh, unfortunately, you're all immobilized. Uh, let's do a short rest over here. And we can only really go one, two, three, four. We can go four up there, I suppose. Yeah, so if we do Dancing Shadows to move three and Smoke Step to allow us to move one, we'll be able to get onto this and get some some money. Oh, we're immobilized. We can't even do that. I have mistaken. Well, at least we got one of them killed. Solid skull, that. Solid skull. Um, yeah, not really... Not really that useful, because it just gets rid of the poison. Let's do the pierce and go right through this guy. We're on our way out anyway, so... And there's the poison right back on us. And the Tinkerer is exhausted. Let's, uh, let's lose Dark Cloud. Silent Force. I mean, overall, the plan to slow this guy down was uh, was fine. We just needed to do it better, really. Um, let's do a short rest. Because with Smoke Step and empowering void we can actually make it to get some or right, actually if we don't if we don't get shot first and killed yeah there we go nothing we can do All right, well, consider it a learning experience. We didn't even get a huge amount of XP from that. But we uh, we did get a little bit of gold, so... This is what happens when you when you decide to go off plan. Our plan was to, to go to the other place. And I suppose we did get to kill some bandits and cultists, so we have progressed that a little bit.
And Fairfox did get a little bit more money, so it's it's not bad. These things happen in Gloomhaven. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I do hope you have enjoyed. As always, if you have, be sure to give a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so, and you'll be told when the next episode goes live. Otherwise, I'll see you next time for another episode of Gloomhaven. See you soon.